assalamu alaikum everyone welcome to database course the topic of today's lecture is database architecture first let's take an overview of the previous lecture in the previous lecture we have discussed what is a database what is a database management system then we have seen the different applications of database then we discussed the file based system and the limitations of file based system then we also discussed the advantages and disadvantages of database we have also seen the database components in the previous lecture and then we have seen how the users interact with the database now coming towards the today's lecture the outline of today's lecture is we will learn about the database architecture and data independence so ansi spark which stands for american national standards institute standards planning and requirements committee proposed an architecture which contains the three levels of abstraction which means that the data is being described at the three distinct levels the three levels are first is external level the external level is related to the users to the end users the way users perceive the data the next level th this is actually the third level internal level and it is related to the operating system and dbms the way dbms and the operating system perceive the data and the middle level which is the conceptual level it is actually an interface between the external level and internal level so it provides mapping between these two level and it helps to keep the external level and internal level independent of each other this is the graphical representation of three level ansi spark architecture we have external level then we have conceptual level and then we have internal level we will discuss each level in detail okay so what is the objective of three level architecture so this architecture ansi spark architecture did not become the standard of database architecture but it gives us information about the basic functionality of database management systems so the objective of three level architecture is each user will have a different customized view of the data so different users may want to access different type of information so for each user there will be a separate customized view this is one of the objective of three level architecture for example one student just wants to see the course that is being offered in semester fall 2020 okay he just want to check the list of courses while there is another student who wants to see the course and which teacher or which instructor is teaching that course so for both users the view will be customized then user should not have to deal directly with the physical database storage details so obviously the end users should not be concerned about the physical storage or physical implementation of the database the database administrator should be able to change the database storage structures without affecting the user's view so whatever is happening at the implementation level or at the physical database the users should not get affected of that the internal structure of the database should be unaffected by changes to the physical aspects of the storage so if we are changing the storage if there is any change in the storage of database it should not affect the internal structure of the database the database administrator should be able to change the conceptual structure of the database without affecting all users 
so the database may need to change the logical structure of the data to add new entities and create new relationships but without affecting all the users so these are the objective of three level architecture okay now we will discuss each level in detail so the first level is external level external level is the user's view of the database how user is perceiving the data this level describes that part of the database that is relevant to the user so this level is only concerned with that part of database that is relevant to the end user user has a view of the real world which is being presented in the form that the user is familiar with like it includes only those entities attributes and relationships in the real world that the user is interested in like i gave you example if a student just want to check the courses offered in particular semester so he will only get that information there will be other entities attributes and relationship in that database but that is not required for this particular user so he will or she will not see them different views may have different representation of the same data so the data can be same but the representation can be different at the external level for example some user may see the date in the format of month day and year while the other user may want to see the date in the format of day month and year so the data can be represented in different way the same data can be represented in different way views may even include data that combined or derived from several entities okay so at external level the data can be derived like for example if you want to check the age of an employee of some company so it is unlikely to store the age of an employee because the, the age is a changing number instead of age we can store the date of birth of that employee so in our original database or physical database we have stored the date of birth of employee but because the user wants to check the age of employee so the age will be derived from the date of birth field so at external level the data can be derived from the original data next level is conceptual level which is a middle level the community view of the database this level describes what data is stored in the database and relationships among the data so conceptual level is basically the logical structure of database it is independent of the storage details we don't need to worry about the storage and implementation details at the conceptual level we are concerned with the logical structure like how many entities will be there what will be the attributes what will be the data type of attributes but how much bytes those attributes will be required this is not important at this level so the conceptual level represents all entities their attributes and their relationships the constraints on the data like if you have some constraints about the data that in the gender field you can enter either male or female so this is the constraint on that data such constraints are defined at the conceptual level then the semantic information about the data security and integrity information so how you will keep your data secure and how you will maintain the integrity all these things are described at the conceptual level or the logical level the third level is the internal level so the physical representation of the data on the computer this level describes how the data is stored in the database so internal level is basically the physical implementation of database here we need to worry about how to store data where to store data 
the internal level is concerned with the things as storage space allocation for data and indexes record descriptions for the storage record placement data compression if the data is very big in size so you may need to compress that data and data encryption techniques like, like if the data is sensitive you may want to store that data in encrypted form so these implementation details will be described at the internal level now what is a schema mapping and instances so schema is the overall description of database okay the overall description of the database is called schema it includes all the entities the attributes and the relationship between the entities so the overall description of the database is the schema so we have three type of schemas based on the three level architecture so we have external schemas at the external level which includes different type of views then we have conceptual schema at the conceptual level which includes the information about entities attributes and relationships between them then we have internal schema at the internal level which includes the details of internal model along with the storage details now mapping is done by dbms between these three types of schema so basically the external schema is being derived from the conceptual schema any information any data that is present in the view at external level must be derived from the conceptual level so this is external mapping when you are mapping the data from external level to the conceptual level and when you are actually mapping data from conceptual from logical structure to the actual physical record this is called internal mapping so internal mapping is done between the conceptual schema and internal schema so here we have the logical representation of data okay we have we know that we have these entities and these attributes and when it maps to internal schema here we have the original record that is being stored at some storage okay the database instance now when we talk about schema we said it is an overall description of the database how we are going to design our database the database instance is the data in the database and at any particular point in time is called database instance so any data in your database now we are not talking about the structure of the data which is actually the schema we are talking about the actual record so the registration number of a student that is being stored in a database at a particular time that is the database instance now moving forward this diagram explains the difference between the three levels okay so this is the external level in which the data is being displayed to the user in the form of views now we have two separate views in the first view we have s number first name last name age salary this is for one user the other user may need to see staff number last name and branch number so these are two different views and these this data is now combined at the conceptual level now you can see that the data at the external level is being derived from the conceptual level and here you can see that in the conceptual level we have stored date of birth but in external view we have derived the age from date of birth and here we have map s number to staff number in conceptual level so the information will be the same but the metadata is different and then this conceptual level in which the entities and attributes are described is now mapped to internal level 
at the internal level is the actual implementation of data. So here it is written in high level language and here it is a structure that defines the data type and the number of bytes required for data and then this is the next pointer that points to the next record. This implementation is at the internal level. Okay, the next we have is data independence. The major objective of the three layer architecture is to provide data independence. So we have two different types of data independence, logical data. Logical data independence refers to the immunity of the external schemas to changes in the conceptual schema. So if any change occur at the conceptual level, if any new entity has been added, any new relationship has been created, it should not affect the external schema which is related to the end user. So you may want to tell that particular user who is interested in that particular change but for the other users there is no need to inform them about the change of the conceptual schema. Then we have physical data. Physical data independence refers to the immunity of the conceptual schema to changes in the internal schema. So if we are changing the internal schema, if we are shifting from one storage system to another storage system, it should not affect the logical structure of the data. It may affect the users like in the form of performance, the user may experience the difference in performance but the view of the data will not get affected. So with the help of three layer architecture, we are able to achieve data independence. 